Welcome to 5 Minute School and in this video we're going to be talking about pericardial effusion and pericardial or cardiac tamponade. So the pericardial cavity is this two part membrane which surrounds the heart and it has this outer fibrous connective membrane called the parietal pericardium and we also have this inner two layered serous membrane called the visceral pericardium. This space is also known as the pericardial sac and it contains a small amount of pericardial fluid which is around 15 to 50 milliliters in volume and the purpose of it is to lubricate the area and it acts as a barrier to protect the heart from infection and inflammation. Pericardial effusion is when the volume of the fluid in this cavity exceeds the limit and this results in some symptoms such as chest pain or a painful pressure sensation, shortness of breath and malaise. The cause of pericardial effusion is any process which can cause injury or inflammation to the pericardium or some kind of process which prevents lymphatic drainage which leads to fluid accumulation. The amount of fluid that's present in the pericardial space is always going to be balanced between the production of it and the resorption. And if there's more production than reabsorption, the volume of the fluid that's present is going to increase. The fluid actually comes from blood plasma filtrate from the epicardial capillaries and the myocardium, and then it's drained away by the parietal lymphatic capillaries. The causes of pericardial effusion can be divided into inflammatory causes and non-inflammatory causes. So the inflammatory causes can be some kind of infection. This can be from viruses like the Coxsackie A or B virus or HIV. It could also be from bacteria like Mycobacterium or in general gram-positive cocci. Fungal infections could also be a cause like from Candida and also protozoal infections like from Toxoplasma. Other inflammatory causes can be through autoimmune diseases like lupus or rheumatoid arthritis. It could also be due to cardiac injury, for example, after heart surgery or after a heart attack. Drug sensitivity may also be a cause too. Non-inflammatory causes can be through tumours, and this could either be a primary tumour of the heart or some kind of secondary cancer which spreads to the pericardium from elsewhere in the body. Other non-inflammatory causes could be some kind of metabolic condition, like a protein deficiency, trauma to the chest which is a common cause and reduced lymphatic drainage like in cases of congestive heart failure. These are just a few of the causes but there also can be many more. If the buildup of pericardial fluid is too much and beyond the normal amount there is an increase in intrapericardial pressure and if this gets too high it can end up affecting heart function. So pericardial effusion which increases this intrapericardial pressure to a large amount where it starts to affect cardiac function, this condition in particular is called cardiac tamponade. So cardiac tamponade is when the intrapericardial pressure builds up so high due to pericardial effusion that it starts to affect cardiac function. We have to remember that the fluid buildup which is occurring in the pericardial space is being contained quite well because of the outer fibrous layer of the pericardium. So we have reduced contractibility of the ventricles and then the chambers start to collapse which prevents the appropriate filling of the heart chambers and overall results in reduced cardiac output. There are three classic signs of cardiac tamponade and these are called Beck triad. The first is hypertension and that's because of reduced cardiac output because of less blood going to the heart. The second is elevated jugular venous pressure and that's because of less blood entering the atria because less is going through the tricuspid valve to the ventricle. So there's a buildup of pressure in the superior vena cava and the corresponding jugular vein. We also have a muffled heartbeat due to the buildup of pericardial fluid. So the heart which makes the typical lub-dub noise, this heartbeat sound is going to sound muffled due to the fluid buildup. Other typical symptoms of cardiac tamponade include shortness of breath and abnormal pulse. In addition to the typical symptoms of cardiac tamponade, to confirm the exact diagnosis, ECGs could be done which shows sinus tachycardia, low voltage QRS and electrical alternance, but most commonly echocardiums, which are a type of ultrasound. That's usually done to help confirm the diagnosis and it can help show the exact location and the amount of fluid buildup. The treatment for cardiac tamponade includes oxygen support and a procedure called pericardiocentesis, which involves inserting a needle through the skin into the pericardium and draining the fluid. 